I went to graduate school and I didn't actually think I wanted to be a professor, I just wanted to be an artist. And what an artist meant to me is being able to be flexible with what subject matter I could pursue. But uh, teaching is a great way to continue being an artist. And I always thought part-time teaching and, uh, and then have an art practice where I make art, sell art, commissions, um, you know, be in the conversation with people that I want to be in the conversation with. I'm interested in pattern, decoration, and history and how they intersect. So when I went to graduate school, the professors there really help you with all of those issues, but they also teach you how to be a professor. So there I am after three years, actually longer, it took me five years to get my MFA, two different schools, and a baby in the mix somewhere in there. <laughs> but when I was finished, I was really ready to be a professor. I'd been talking to professors and practicing artists, and I was ready to do both, so I became quite qualified. And then, of course, as a graduate student, you're a teaching assistant, and I had quite a bit of on-hands teaching where I taught my own courses as well, even though I was a graduate student. So you start feeling confident about being a professor, and you start understanding that it's about performance and knowledge and motivating the students, that somehow that, that mix is something that you're good at, you know, and I think I'm pretty good at it, you know, and, and I, I like the idea of motivating students to, to love art the way I love it. The best part of being a professor of the arts, and I teach painting and, and drawing, so the best part for me is when the, it, the class is over and the students don't leave because they're engaged in what they're doing. They're totally immersed. Doesn't always happen, but um, you know, I hope that they can see some of the things that we're learning. There's something magical about it. The other thing I like doing that I'm not sure the students like, but I don't know how else I'm going to learn how to be a better teacher, is to introduce a new project. So it's my first time. It's going to be a little awkward, but I'm so excited about it. I've been thinking about it for days. I want to do something a little different. Even after 20 years of teaching, I'm going to do something a little different. It has to be interesting for me, and then I can convey that enthusiasm to the students. So sometimes I, I get very excited about a new project, like we did the, the ink project. It was a new project, and I decided ink is the link, and we're going to... And, and two new classes that I hadn't taught before. And uh, I think they're great and I learn from it, and, but then the students are learning with me. In a way, the students are also the teachers in this situation. And the hierarchy of my being a teacher and the students being students is broken down. And I love that. But you don't want that to happen too often, right? You want the professor to know what, what she's doing. And, <laughs> you know, um, but then I would never learn a new assignment. I have to learn too, so I like when I'm learning from my students in those situations. I am learning as much from my students as they might be learning from me. My biggest challenge uh, in my career as a professional artist, this would include teaching, but just art making more, I think, is staying connected to people who share my interests. Um, and there aren't that many locally. So I've had to, thank goodness for the internet, I've had to stay in touch with people who are outside of San Diego, because there are very few in San Diego that the specificity of my conversation with people is about the Middle East and Middle Eastern history, and there are very few people in the arts in Middle Eastern history, so I have to look elsewhere. I have to go to Europe, I have to go to the Middle East, I have to go to New York, Chicago, Los Angeles. And um, because of email, and, and all of that, I've been able to do that. That's been my biggest challenge, not to feel isolated. And I love San Diego. It's the best place to make art. It's, uh, you know, there's very little distraction. The light is beautiful here. I mean, I wouldn't want to live anywhere else, but I feel very fortunate that I've been able to keep that, those, those links to other people around the world um, going. I think the cutting the budgets for art programs all across, even at the university level, we're feeling that everywhere. 
is, um, requires two things. First of all, why just the arts? Aren't we all supposed to share the pool? Although I think it's being cut in many places. And it requires that administrators talk to practitioners of teaching, like me. I mean, I see this classroom as a laboratory. Um, and ask me first how I can cut my expenses. Ask me. Maybe there's a creative way to do this instead of just cutting it out. I believe art's important for all generations to come and in the past, and it's been missing from a lot of school programs. I don't mean at the college level, although it is missing from some colleges and universities. Harvard doesn't have an art program, for example, as great as it is. Um, but it's missing from the lower grades, you know, from kindergarten to high, through high school. And a lot of those kids that can't express themselves any other way through writing, through you know, reading or, or other math or whatever, may be able to express themselves through art. But that's not the only reason. But I mean, you know, in first grade, I went to my son's class and we did this painting. And there was a student who was very unhappy, who was throwing chairs around, clearly from an impoverished family, and never had the opportunity to express himself. So we did the rainforest painting, and he was totally fixated. He was transfixed by the paint. And he behaved, and he did three times as much as the other students. And we were able to identify this kid. He needs art in his life, you know? But everyone needs it. Everyone needs it, because it's a period of play and uh, meditation, relaxation, using your body to affect something. But it's also important because art is a, a bridge to all the disciplines. And so making art is an opportunity to do that. And in our very specialized world that we're in, we need people who can build bridges. It's an opportunity to learn how to connect, connect the dots. So that's important for everybody, not just a, a kid in crisis. My advice to young artists is look at your peers because they're gonna be the ones you actually learn from the most. I'm giving you a start, a little push in this direction, but in the end, um, it's your peers and your conversations with your peers that matters. And you're not gonna be 20 years old forever.